Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to discuss with you guys why it can be problematic for drug-free lifters or natural lifters to use high-volume training. Now, I want to state up front, we're talking about optimizing your training the best that you can because you will never find optimal, but you can always do better, you can always improve, you can always make 5% or 10% more results over the course of a month or a year than you were with something else you were doing. And I don't want people to think that this means that there are not natural people who have made fantastic gains off high volume training. There are natural people who have. There are also heavily enhanced lifters who have been very competitive and done very well with higher frequency, lower volume training. So it's not to say that this is a, people who are using drugs should do this, people who are not using drugs should do this automatically. We're just trying to fine tune things a little bit and give you guys kind of the best idea of, of what's going on and why certain things may not work well for you. The big deal with higher volume training is that particularly for drug free people, and to a larger extent, even people on hefty doses of drugs, there is a rapidly point of diminished return from the workload and metabolic fatigue that you induce from training. If you come in and you beat on a muscle group for an hour straight, you're not going to get two or three times as many gains as if you would just come in and hit it for 10 or 15 minutes. You might get 10% more from it. You might get 5% more from it. But that first set or two, if sufficient workload is given, particularly if you're doing multiple exercises have stimulated the vast overwhelming the majority of what you're going to get in that muscle group. Everything else beyond that is going to be a rapidly diminished returns with every bit of additional volume. It's still potentially adding something. The problem becomes when it impedes recovery, when it reduces your ability to recover and do the same movements or work the same muscles again frequently. And the reason for that is that when you're not on any anabolics, you're in the normal hormone ranges for humans, Muscle protein synthesis usually returns to baseline, returns to normal somewhere between the 28 hour and 48 hour mark. That's your window of opportunity and everything beyond that, you don't grow or adapt beyond that. And so if you end up doing so much workload for a muscle or a set of muscle groups that you can't come in and train it again in say 48 hours or 72 hours and produce as much workload again, you are shortchanging your weekly muscle protein synthesis uptime or your monthly or whatever sort of way you want to look at it, whatever sort of time frame you're going to inhibit the amount of uptime. When drugs go into the mix, that window can be extended longer. Like your muscle protein synthesis can not only peak higher, but it can extend longer. And it doesn't mean just at a certain line, oh, this person's natty versus this person's enhanced. There are massively varying degrees of enhancement. When you look at various people who are on drugs, you should notice that some of them have 50 or 100 pounds more muscle than the others, even though they might train with a similar training style. There is more than one level of drug use out there. There are varying types. But as a general rule, as drug doses and drug combinations go into the stack, the muscle protein synthesis potential increases. So you get wiggle room on that because lower volume training produces more muscle protein synthesis for them. Higher volume training produces more muscle protein synthesis for them and the uptime stays longer. So they grow more and grow for a longer period of time after a workout. They have a tremendous amount of muscle room the more the drugs go up. So the higher the drug dose, the more leeway they have. People on nothing don't have a lot of wiggle room there. You're absolutely not going to grow beyond 48 hours after you train a muscle. Zero, nothing, you're done. So ideally your training should be geared around the ability for you to hit each muscle approximately three times a week, sometimes more, sometimes less, somewhere maybe the two to four range, we'll call it two to four, but three being kind of close to ideal because if you can stimulate sufficient volume and workload, to get the full 40 to 48 hours of growth, you can hit it again every couple days. So three times a week is gonna be ideal muscle protein to this is uptime. But again, that is still going to be dependent upon are you doing enough work to stimulate that amount of growth? Are you doing enough workload? And that's where being really efficient with what you're doing matters. So what we're really talking about here is that too much workload, too much volume from the higher volume training, if it impedes your ability to recover enough to train again frequently, and you're not on any drugs to extend that muscle protein synthesis uptime, then you're going to see less results than you could be getting. You still might see fantastic results, you might still see good gains, but you could be getting a lot more for the amount of time you're spending in the gym. And that's what we're talking about here. All right guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Oh, Mount Bicepius.